Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to bring you a video on five wild edible plants that you can most likely find growing within your lawn or your yard. In this video, we're just going to be talking about several of the common plants that can be found in your lawn or even your garden if you have a garden within your yard. These plants are also probably going to be a nuisance for you in the garden. However, the good thing is, as you're weeding them out, you can also eat them. The first plant that we're going to talk about today is garlic mustard, which is this plant right in front of me. And we can tell garlic mustard by its very distinct leaves. It has these kind of awkwardly shaped leaves with this cleft at the back. They're scalloped or broadly toothed or rounded teeth along the margins of the leaf. This time of year, in the uh, very beginning of middle of April, it's April 10th right now when I'm filming this video, and the weather that I've had, this plant, this garlic mustard plant that we're looking at, is getting ready to bolt. We can see some flower clusters starting in right here along the top, and we can see these younger groupings of leaves. If we look closely, we're also going to notice this plant has developed a little bit of a stem. Whenever you're going to eat your garlic mustard, there are three different parts that you can actually eat. Two of them are going to be the most prolific and also the best tasting. One of those is the leaves. The leaves of garlic mustard are really good raw. They're great in salads. They're great in place of lettuce or spinach. If you're using that for sandwiches or wraps or burritos or quesadillas even, you can get really creative with these leaves on garlic mustard. The leaves of garlic mustard also make really good pestos. They also make really good spreads and are awesome added to salad dressings. Now the top of the plant here is also edible raw and you can use that in a lot of the similar ways that you would the leaves. So I'm going to consider these two similar in use. Now the stem of garlic mustard, or the shoot as it's properly known, can also be boiled for about six to seven minutes until it's just lightly tender. And then you can also eat this and you have a nice stem or shoot vegetable similar to asparagus. It doesn't taste like asparagus, but it is usable in a similar way. The second plant that we're going to be talking about today is broadleaf dock. Broadleaf dock is very common in lawns and waste areas. It's also very common in pastures like around horse fields and cow pastures and horse pastures and things like that. The leaves are obviously very broad compared to its relative curly dock. Both of these plants are very high in vitamins and minerals, and they're also rather bitter. So, whenever you're going to use these in your salads, which they can be eaten raw, you definitely want to cut them up and mix them with plenty of other mild greens, like domestic lettuce, to mask their very bitter flavor. However, as this plant grows taller, and it starts to develop a stalk and then a seed pod, once those seeds mature later in the year, around August and October, you can actually use those seeds to extend your flower that you already have. You can add them to flower for some extra fiber. You don't want to make your totality of flower out of this plant seeds because it's, most of it is undigestible. But a little of indigestible fiber is very good for a binding agent with inside of the gut. And this plant can definitely help with that. Plus, in the early times of the year like we have right now, these leaves are great added to salads in the condition that they're in right now. This plant has a very sour sort of citrus flavor to it in its leaves at this time of the year. Plus, they can also be a little bit bitter. So make sure you mask these very well with other plants. If we get closer into the basal rosette of the broadleaf dock, we're going to notice these little spikes like I have right here. These little spikes are delicious because these are the most tender and most sour sections of the plant. Now, most people may not think of sour as being good, but it has a very citrusy sort of sour flavor to it. It doesn't taste like lemon or lime or most conventional citrus food, fruit, but it does taste very good added to salads. And this spike is great on this time of the year. Now, the third plant that we're going to be talking about today is wild onions or wild garlic. In my hand, I have wild onions. I say and or, mainly because in some yards you're gonna find a lot more wild garlic than you will wild onions. In my yard, I have a lot of these wild onions. They look very similar. 
However, generally wild onions are known to grow in groupings or clusters like we can see right here. Wild onions, the bulbs are what's edible. However, the top of the plant is also edible. It's just not generally something you want to cook. The greens of your wild onions are excellent in place of the greens of domestic green onions that you would buy at the supermarket. So these are a really good replacement for that, and you can find them in massive abundance in your yard and parks and places like that. These are also a very common garden pest and a very common garden nuisance for a lot of people trying to grow their own gardens. So you can remove these plants and keep your domestic crops in your garden safe while also enjoying some of the bountiful harvest from nature from these delicious wild onions. The bulbs of wild onions are very small, and so are the cloves of wild garlic. However, don't let their size fool you because they are very strong in flavor, and that's something else to keep in mind is that they have a very bold flavor. One of the other plants that we're going to be talking about today is the wild blue violet. The wild blue violet is very common in yards. It's a very low growing plant. It likes to hug right above the ground level. It usually avoids lawnmower blades entirely because of this. However, these flowers are edible raw. They're very delicious. They're very sweet. Plus, they're also a really good source of vitamin A and vitamin C. The leaves of violet are also edible raw. However, later in the year, towards the middle of May and beyond, they can become a little tough and a little stringy. So it's good to cut them up and add them to other greens to get a more acceptable flavor and a more acceptable texture to the leaves of violet. However, this is one of the many plants that you can find in your lawn that is a very delicious wild edible and it's also extremely healthy. It doesn't take much to gather them. For example, to pick off this little flower, That's all I had to do, and then now I've got this delicious little flower. Maybe a second or so, and there you go. These are an excellent garnish to salads. They're excellent garnish to plates. They're great added to, you know, plenty of different salads and plenty of different wraps, plenty of sandwiches. Any way that you want to use these guys raw, you can. Also, interestingly enough, you can candy the flowers of violet by boiling them in some sugar syrup and then removing it from the sugar syrup and rolling it in powdered sugar and you can make a violet flower candy out of these as well. Now the last plant that we're going to be talking about today is white clover. Right here in front of me we can see all of this white clover right here that I'm rubbing my fingers across. White clover is a very familiar lawn weed. However, I wouldn't consider it a weed. The reason for that is that uh, nitrogen is fixated within the roots of clover. Clover is in the legume family, and legumes, like your beans, are used domestically to fixate nitrogen within the soil. So is alfalfa and plenty of other crops to fixate nitrogen within the soil. Now, all species of legumes fixate various minerals and nutrients within your soil. White clovers are very good or are very good at fixating a lot of trace minerals within the soil. But they're also edible, and a lot of people don't know this, that the leaves of your clovers are completely edible. They can be a little bit difficult to digest raw. However, once we boil them for about one to five minutes, we're going to notice that they're a lot easier to digest. Plus, we also release a lot of natural plant protein because clover has a lot of protein within it. Some people worry about cyanide poisoning with clovers, not only white clovers, but red clovers and various other species of clover. However, that isn't something to be terribly concerned about because they have a natural trace amount of cyanide within them, but so do a lot of our domestic crops as well. The amount within clovers isn't going to be harmful unless that is literally all you are eating for a long period of time. And I don't think anybody wants to pick or eat or cook or process that much clover. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. These are a good thing to add to your diet. They're very delicious. Uh, they have a very nice bitter flavor to them. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If you want to learn more about wild edibles or medicinal plants, please make sure to subscribe.